All right, so I'll be making this input remapping menu right here. You can remap the inputs, replace them, bind two inputs, uh, clear the rows, reset the rows to default, reset everything to default, and it saves in the background. I'm also going to assume that you already have a pause menu, so I'm not going to be making that. I'm just going to be making the input system. All right, so first thing first, just go inside your project settings. Go to enhance input to user setting and just enable this uh, enable user settings setting right here. If you don't do this, nothing will work. This is like a new thing since Unreal 5.3. So enable this setting, very important. Next up, you wanna add some mappings to your input mapping context. So you can have multiple contexts, doesn't matter. Just go inside the one you want and add some mappable input so just select an input i have some already made up here like this so i'm just going to make a new one just for an example so just go to your input override the settings add this uh, player mappable key settings and just give it a name so maybe move left i'm just going to go copy paste this here move left and i'm going to add it to my movement category. So movement category. And then you can do this for all the inputs you want. Then save it. All right. So after that, you're going to go and create the uh, user widget. So I'm just going to add a folder here, which is going to be UI. And I'm going to create the three widgets that we need. So if you already have your widgets, you can skip ahead. Other than that, I'm just going to go and copy paste some user widgets that I made earlier. So, blueprint widget, just like that, WBP. I'm going to call this uh, input list, which is going to be the whole thing itself. Then I'm going to do a, another widget, which is going to be my category widget, WBP, single category, which is going to be added as a child for later. And then uh wbp you guessed it single input which is going to be a input shell inside the categories later and that's it now inside my input list i'm going to go and copy paste some ui that i made there we go so the only thing you really need to do here is at least have your reset button if you want to add it and make it a variable other than that, you can make it look however you want, doesn't matter. After this, you can go inside your category. Just going to copy paste some stuff here. And that's it. That's for the category. The only thing uh, that matters is your text, of course, because you want to display your text later. And we're going to bind it uh, to the uh, category text later on. You can do this from a variable if you want to, but I'm not going to use this. So do a, do as you wish and then you're going to do the same thing for the uh, single input so i'm just going to copy paste some ui again there we go so i have my text here which is going to bind later i have an icon here which is just an image for uh when i remove all my, my mappings uh, the reset button right here the clear button and then the uh keyboard input key selector which you're going to use for uh, the remapping system itself. And uh, that's it. That's the whole thing. So now what we are going to do is add the fundamental functions that we are going to use to make the system work. So just go uh, inside your project, add a function blueprint function library, BPFL. I'm going to call this input library. Library. There we go. That is fine. Uh, so, two functions we're gonna make here are uh, getting the user setting instead of making a variable for everything. We're just gonna make it a uh, public function, and then same thing for uh, getting all our mapping context basically. So, I'm gonna start by getting the mapping context. So, get uh, all EMC. Uh, I'm just going to close this real quick. And then you go ahead and, uh, make a return node right here. There we go. 
and then I'm just going to do something a little bit tricky. I'm going to make a variable, which is going to be input mapping context type object reference. Let's make this right here. Then you got to click away and just make an array like that. And when you pass this like this right here and pass it to the return node, you can actually delete this, delete this, and it makes the um, array node like input context type itself. So you can uh, add your mapping context like this, like here. Compile save, and don't forget to make the function a pure function. And what I like to do personally is just make it compact. So uh, all EMC, just like that. Make this cleaner in my code, in my opinion. There you go. And then you're gonna make another function to get uh, the user settings. So user settings, I'm gonna make this pure also user settings go return node and then we're gonna go and get the enhance whoops enhance user settings and you want to get the one from the player controller now why it's because we're gonna register the input mapping context in a moment from the player controllers so you really want to get this one and the this one right here so get this get the player controller of course there we go and you get the uh, user settings. So get enhance and put user settings like that. Return it. And that's the whole thing. So you just compile save this right here. And you're done with this function library right here. Now what needs to be done, the last thing is go inside your player controller. Me, I'm going to be using the first person template. Go inside the first person controller blueprint. And I'm just going to go and add my uh, code, my nodes for uh, registering the inputs. I'm just going to copy paste some code here so I don't waste some time. I will explain it to you guys. So first get all EMC that we just did. There we go. And then get the user settings. Pass it here and pass it here. And this is what it's going to look like. So we just get from all the user settings for each of them you get if the mapping context is registered to the controller if it's not which is not going to be by the, by default by the way while well, you register it to the uh, controller basically so that's pretty much the whole thing so that's it for this now you can close that and then the last thing we need to do is um add our uh, widget that we made earlier this right here the input list which is going to be the whole list itself to our menu wherever you want it so for me it's going to be inside my control page or tab or whatever and just going to go and grab it add it to my canvas panel I'm just going to place it here maybe make it like full width and height like this and 250 yeah there you go that's perfect so this is my thing maybe size to content just be sure and there you go so when you play the game, pause it, it's going to be right here. And it's going to display all the keys over here like that. There we go. So now we can go inside and make the, the code itself. So I'm just going to start by the input list right here. So I'm going to go inside the graph, like this. I'm sorry. And then what you want to do is just uh, delete this. We don't need that. We don't need that. This we're going to keep. And then you're going to add a bunch of code. Now I'm going to copy paste it and I'm going to explain it to you guys. Don't worry about it. And then um, you can kind of uh, copy paste it from your screen. There we go. I'm going to have some errors. Don't worry about it. I'm going to explain everything to you guys in a moment. So first thing first, we want to do is clear all the chain rail first, because if we don't do this right here, it's going to stack the inputs on top of each other each time we uh well construct the menu basically so you want to clear every children and it's gonna re-add them reconstruct them uh, later on so it kind of acts like a refresh for it but uh the whole purpose is not for them to stack on top of each other basically so do this and basically um this here my all category box is basically just uh the box where i want my inputs to appear so this is like a vertical box i made and uh, I passed it inside the variable and I just uh, made my input appear right here, basically. But it, it could be whatever you want it to be. 
And then uh, for the um, array itself and the, the loop to get all the, the categories, uh, it's going to be right this right here. So we're going to get all the MCs again. <clears throat> And then we're going to get all the mappings from it. So you get from the MC all the mappings. Then uh, inside the mappings, you get all the ones that are player mappable. So the one that we set to player mappable. And then for each one that is mappable, you're going to get uh, the name. And then you're going to check inside the user settings that we do register the uh, mapping context also. And find the uh, row that, it, that is uh, corresponding to that um, name inside the mapping context, basically. And then you gotta get the values from uh, this uh, set node to a uh, array type, and just loop through all the values. And we want to get the display category type. So this is like the tricky part of it. I'll explain why in a second. But you just go and make the loop from the values. You get the display category, and we gotta add it to a um, variable, which is gonna be a name type variable and an array type too. Also, of course. The tricky part of this is, um, for some reason, uh, when we do the add unique, because we don't want to add it uh, simply to the array, because it's going to du duplicate like the ones that has the same categories. We only want to add it like uh, once to the array. Uh, well, it only works with a name type um, variable. If you do this with text type, it will actually duplicate and not um, add unique as it's supposed to be inside a build version of the game. So if you just do add unique like this inside the editor, it's going to work fine, but not inside a build. So that's why I pass it to a string here and then to a text node. Well, to a name node, I mean, sorry. And then I pass it to add unique inside my variable right here. And then I break the loop just to be sure it doesn't stack other uh, uh, information or variables or stuff like that. So this is just like a precaution stuff, but you really want to do this if you want it to work inside your build. And this might change if uh, Unreal fix this uh, like one day or something. But that's the whole thing to get um, the uh, the category variable, basically all the all the categories, at least in, inside your game. When this is done, you just go here and we want to create the uh, category widget, basically. So you through a for each loop, through for each categories that we have, we're gonna construct uh, the single category widget and add it as a child to the category box, basically. And this is uh, why we refresh it because we add the child, and if we leave and construct the menu, it's gonna remove them and add them again and not just tag them together. And now to pass the name, we need to go inside our single category right here graph and you're going to make a variable type text this time which is just going to be category and you want to make it expose and spawn and it's going to make it uh, instance editable save and compile go back here refresh the node right here and just pass this value right here i'm going to come to this later on in the video this is uh, going to be uh, for refreshing some inputs later on uh, don't worry about it for the moment. You don't need it. And yeah, this is it. So if you go here inside your game. Oh, and I forgot actually. Wait. You need to bind it. So if you go to your text in your category, you bind it to the category variable. Then you compile save and then you test it. It's not going to display every category that you have. And of course, if you go inside your mapping context, add some, it's going to add them. If you uh, reorder them inside your mapping context, it's going to reorder the list uh, directly from it. So you can uh, move around your values like that. All right. So now uh, we're going to go and display the inputs. So we went from the input list. Now we're going to display our inputs inside every single category. So we go here. And we go here just like this right here. And now we're going to do something similar that we just did. So we can pretty much copy paste some code from we uh, that we did earlier. But I'm going to copy paste my code so we don't waste some time. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy stuff from my other monitor really quickly. There we go. Oops, I'm lost. There we go. 
So in the construct node, <clears throat> so like we did earlier, what I do is get MC, get all the mappings for each mapping, get the mappable one, get the name, find the mapping row from the user setting, get the array. And now what we do is we don't get the uh, displayed category, we get the the value itself, which is the whole mappable key, which is contains everything. So that's the mapping itself. So you promote this to a variable. I'm just going to create a variable from this right here. And then you break the loop. And then when it breaks, automatic automatically you create instantly the input widget. So you don't make it earlier like we did uh, previously. You just make it right away. And then if the mapable key that we got right here when we broke the loop is equal to the category that we get as a child, well, um, you're going to make sure, well, and by the way, you got to make sure this is uh, exactly um, equal, like the triple equal, not this double ones. And if it's equal, well, you want to create the uh, single input right here. I'm just going to remove this. We don't need this. We don't need this right here too. And then as a, add as a child. Of course and we don't need to actually uh, remove the child right here at the beginning because it does it already in our input list at the beginning right here that's it now inside your input single input you're gonna go right here and you want to add the same variable that we did right here but inside the single input so if we check this here this is a player mappable player key mapping type so we just go right here create a variable player key mapping type right here this is going to be key to map here we go make this expose on spawn editable this go back uh yeah right here refresh it refresh it there we go pass it right here compile save then you go back inside your single input and then from this you can take the input name and just bind key to map to display name that's it we're not gonna bind anything to this right here and then if you go here press play pause then you have all your inputs and your the display name are displayed right here but not the inputs of course because we didn't set them yet so this is this works now for the um single input itself uh we're gonna go and display the keys too not removing yet but just display the key at least so delete this delete this we don't need that do this right here then i'm gonna go inside my code and copy paste some stuff again there we go all right so not what we are going to do is create a function that we're going to use a lot inside uh, this um, widget here, which is going to be basically getting which input from which uh, slot we're going to be uh, like selecting, changing and everything because we have two, right? So we have the first one and the second one, which is going to be the first and the second. So what you want to do is create a new function, which I'm going to call, um, oops, uh, select input from slot um and basically what we're gonna do is um just gonna copy paste my stuff is do this right here and make a return node like this and you're gonna return the mapping name the slot here default key you can pause this by the way just to take your time to copy paste this this and you gotta pass in the slot here because we gotta we want to know from which slot we're getting the information so we're just gonna go and get the i'm gonna call this return slot so i doesn't call i don't call my stuff everywhere the same thing this is bad habit of course and just call this slot right here there you go and then from this here it's user settings of course there we go and it's gonna look like this right here so this is the the whole function i'm just gonna make this bigger for you guys to copy paste this better so we get uh, the slot 
and then we form the key mapping that is passed here. We're gonna find the mapping inside every single mapping that we have, and then it's gonna get uh, from that mapping well the name from it. The sl the slot is gonna be the same, of course. Uh, the default key, and the current key from it, basically. Then you can make this function pure, and I'm not gonna make this uh, compact because I, I don't need to. This is it. So now we're gonna go back inside your menu right here, and we're gonna make, uh, we're gonna drag here our function. So here we can add uh, whichever slot we want. Usually in games, there is only first and second slot. I've never seen or rarely seen game with a third slot, and I've never seen game with like fourth, fifth, or seventh slot or whatever. So don't use these uh, if you don't need to, of course, but for this tutorial, we'll use the first and second. And then you just go and select your input uh, key selector, the first one and the second one right here. You go and set selected key. There you go. Pass this right here and you make it to the uh, current key actually. And this is gonna be, you're gonna need to break it. Uh, Sorry, we're gonna need to make this one. There we go. And then pass the key right here. You can hide this. And this is gonna be the whole thing to uh, set the selected key and display it in our menu. And now you, we do the same thing um, for the second one. So just copy paste this, drag this here, here, and of course change this to second. And it's gonna look like that right here. So this is the final product right here to display the stuff. You press play, control, and now you have all your inputs. Of course, we don't have anything here because by default, the second one is empty. And uh, by default, there is our input right here. All right. So now we're going to do the remapping itself. So you're going to go right here. And you're going to click on your input key, key selector one or two, whatever it wants. We're just gonna copy paste it for the other one right after this. So on key selecting change and key selected, uh, key selected like this. And now what we're going to do is make a variable Boolean type, which is gonna be called um, B selecting key, for example. And then we're gonna set it to through when we click on it. And then you're gonna pass this to a branch. There you go. And then can paste this and make it false. And the reason we do this right here is because every time we call this function right here, the set selected key, it calls this right here. And we don't want that, of course, because we want it only to activate when we select a key from clicking on it basically. So th this is why we pass this through a variable. Other than that, we don't want it to be, every time we select the key, it kind of does the remapping itself. So this is why we do this. And then we're gonna do a, um, we're gonna do this right here. We're gonna break it. Then the key here, we're gonna promote it to a variable, which is gonna be new key. Right up to this right here, there we go. I'm going to hide this right here. And then we're going to go and create our um, remapping function, which I'm going to call um, update uh, mapping. There we go. Then I'm going I'm to go and copy and paste some code. Oops. Sorry. There we go. Then you gotta get the user settings. Pass it right here, like that, like that. I'm just gonna plug my stuff in and then I'm gonna show it to you guys, of course. Don't worry about it. Um, this is good. Then we go and pass the mapping name right here. There, the slot, the new key, and the uh, target. There you go. And the new key is gonna go here too. There we go. So it's pretty much gonna look like this right here. So we get the mapping name, the slot, and the key, the new key. And uh, basically, what's happening is we map the new key inside the mapping name and its slot right here. 
we apply as the settings and then we save them and then we set the selected key uh, inside the UI for the cosmetic uh, to this new key basically. Um, by the way, the save setting here creates its own game file. I'm going to do it to, uh, to show you guys, but it creates its uh, own game file inside your uh, project folder. So you don't have to make a game save, game save blueprint and like a whole system for it. It just creates everything for you, which is great. We don't have to do anything else than that. So you do this right here and I do it in, like at every brew mapping that I do. But you could do this uh, as a button if you want to or whatever. But uh, I feel like it's better, better practice to just make it save every time we change something. So the player never has to uh, worry about anything breaking. All right. So we go back here. We get the update key right here. Pass this. And now we get the uh, key that we want to map right here. We can break it. We get the mapping name. We get the um, the slot. Actually, we we don't change the slot. Uh, we want the first slot to be changed. The new key is gonna be, of course. Whoops, the new key. And then the um, the target right here is gonna be the input key sector right here. Uh, I should rename this um, input selector like this so it's not confusing oops selector there you go and you can hide these to make this cleaner save there you go and this is it this is the whole mapping so if you go here play it press control and if i remap my move forward to f it's gonna remap it if i press w it doesn't work press f we can move if we go back it's still at f if we actually look our um, folder right here, go to save, save game, it's going to be right here inside your uh, game folder, your project folder. So uh, yeah, that's, a, that's really neat. You don't have to create a blueprint for this. So it just goes there. All right. Now for the, um, I'm not going to make the second one yet because I'm not done. But uh, this is the, the whole process for it, basically. Um, so now, what we're going to do is make the reset row button. So basically, what you want to do is it's fairly simple. Since we did this uh, function right here, is uh, select your reset button, which is default button right here, unclicked. I'm just gonna drag this down because we're gonna make the second one here later. You're gonna update the mapping right here. And then uh, you're gonna get the input key here. And then for the first slot, when we press a button for this mapping right here, for this first slot right here, we gotta reset the new key to the default key right here. And we're gonna get it from the first uh, selector right here that's the whole thing right there that's the whole thing for the uh, reset to default so we go here make this another one you get the second input key selector right here we're gonna make it right now because we can it's really simple and there you go that's it that's the whole thing you don't have to do anything else that's it so really fun and if we want to clear them, make this on click. Well, we pretty much guessed it. You go, we're going to copy paste this here. There we go. Plug this in. You can remove these because we don't want to reset to anything when we want to clear it to none. To both of them. And that's it. That's the whole thing. So if you go inside here, you go there. If I press this, it goes back to W, press this, clears it. Uh, it's, I'm, I can't even do this. It's not mapping here, but I just want to show you that it resets. So this is that. All right. So now I'm going to do some cosmetic stuff a little bit before I go to something else. So um, something I want to do is actually um, when I can 
reset my row to default, I want to display my button, otherwise I don't want it to display. And uh, if there's no key uh, mapped into uh, an action, I want my warning symbol to appear. So we're gonna do that. I'm just gonna reset myself to default. There we go. So we go inside your single input and we're gonna make um, two new functions. So what we're gonna do is uh, just add a function in and I call this um, update uh, reset UI. I'm gonna make the one right now too, update warning UI. Whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. Gonna call. I'm gonna start for my refresh one first, and then you get uh, inside this your select input from slot. Second time, get to second right here, and we need to um, well verify if they're not equal to the um, to the uh, default one basically. So what's gonna happen is. Um, if my default key is equal to my current key or the other one one the other way around maybe makes more sense but if the current key is equal to the default key uh basically and the same thing for this one of course too if it's true and the other one is also true well we don't want it to display because if they're both to their default the default button right here set visibility is going to be hidden so if it's equal to default both of them we can hide the button but if one of them is not equal to uh, default well we want to make it visible basically there we go and then for the update warning we kind of do something similar but there is a trick to it that I'm going to teach you guys because I want to explain it to you guys so we can understand. Make this two second. Did I make the other one two second? Yeah, okay. So um, I'm going to make like the set visibility first and then explain to you guys why we need to do this this way now. So the warning icon right here, set visibility just gonna copy paste this then one is gonna be visible and then it was other one is gonna be hidden right here make the branch but this time we're gonna inverse the visible and the hidden ones like this because um, we're gonna check if the current key is valid not equal to none you cannot do this because this will well it will work for the first one but not for the second one now I'll tell you why. It's because the first one, um, it's basically never going to be um, equal to, to none, pretty much. By default, at least. But if you set a key to none, it equals none, of course. But by default, the second slot is not equal to none. It's equal to null, but appears as none. So this is very important to, this, to uh, make the difference. So if I call is valid here and is valid here, it's gonna check is it valid as is it not a null key or is it uh, not at a none key. So then you can make the um, not boolean because we don't want it to be uh, invalid. We want it to be not valid. So verify if the key is not valid for both of them. And if both of them are no, not valid, well, you can uh, make the warning icon visible. And if they're not both valid, well, you can hide them. So if they're valid, if one of them at least is valid, it's gonna go here and it's gonna hide it. But if there's, uh, if none of the keys are mapped, so if they're null or at none, it's gonna show it and tell you like a hey, uh, this action uh, has nothing mapped to it. So this is this is the thing. But this is like the trickiest part is this right here. We cannot do like equal equal none. It will not work. You need to do this right here. So that's it. that's it for this.
Now inside your function here, what you want to do is just drag both of them like this. Add it to your code right here. So we're going to add it for the construct. Add it for the remapping here. Add it for the reset here. And add it for the clear here. This is what it's going to look like. If you go here, if I remap this to another key than default, it's going to go my default one here. If I reset, if I clear this, it's going to be, I, it's not to default and it's at none also. If I clear this right here like that. So that's it for this. Now, what I want to do is actually um, reset uh, all my inputs. So let's say I have uh, all my inputs that are different and I just want to remap everything. Well, we're going to do something about it and go inside our input list that we did at the beginning and go inside the reset button and just, whoops, I'll click, there you go. And then we're going to make something very nice, which is just a small little function that reset everything. So just make a new function, which is going to be reset all. There we go. Oops, no, I'm not going to call this. I'm sorry, I'm out. I, I wanted to go inside it. There you go. And something we're going to do also before we start coding is make a custom event right here. Custom event, which is going to be re fresh all like this and we'll we'll get to it in a moment don't worry about it so go inside your function and then i'm gonna copy paste my code for you guys right here and i'm gonna go and explain to you guys what it's all about so what happens to refresh the keys is pretty much um what's happening oh it's my okay we'll get to this is we what I like to do actually is uh, get uh, and check if we have a save file actually, because a way to uh, reset everything to default is actually just deleting the save file. It's going to reset everything to default. But I want to make sure that the settings are reset to default too as the input setting. So I do check if the game self, uh, the game save save exists. If it does, I want to delete it. If it doesn't exist, which is probably going to be already at default, we just reset the key profile to default either way. So you could also just do this and keep the save file inside your game, but I prefer to like erase everything and just be sure that um, it's it's gone and it's gonna be for sure reset to default. And of course you're gonna add the user settings right here and here, and it's gonna look like that. But this won't work right away because if you play uh, this right here, it's gonna reset everything to default, but it's not gonna um, display it correctly. If I do this and this and I press this, it worked, but it did not show up right away here. But if I do this and come back, it's not going to work. So what you want to do is actually refresh all your mappings that you have. So you're going to go here and you're going to refresh all inputs. Oops, refresh all just like that right here. Go here, and then you can add your function right here. Boom. And now, if I press reset, it's going to reset everything. And I'm going to go back to my old default. I cannot press the F and Q key that I just mapped. But if I do this and this, it will work, of course. But uh, this is uh, the reset function at its best. Okay, so not what we're going to do is prevent a key to be mapped at multiple actions at once. So we don't want that. We want them to be replaced. So we don't want to be remapping keys like these, obviously. So uh, we're going to prevent that. So uh, first of all, we're going to create a function. I already did because um, I basically just copy paid my code, but uh, I don't want to waste time on coding it. So just make a new function, go inside it. And what we're going to do is um, make some inputs that look like these. So uh, slot type, uh, key type, and uh, key selector type. And you're going to make uh, an output, which is going to be a Boolean type. Then you're going to promote them to local variables to make it look less messy. And then we're going to make this whole thing right here, which looks like complicated and hard, but uh, it's not, you'll see. 
so basically uh, make a sequence first because there's three steps to it. And then we're gonna check, uh, first of all, uh, if uh, the new key that we get is equal to uh, any key that is mappable and already map at least. So first of all, we're gonna get the user settings, get the current key profiles, the mapping rows, and then the values. And the reason we do this to get the mappable keys instead of this like we did earlier, is because this way works to get uh, all the other slots too. So the first and the second slot, and it gets all the new inputs that the player could have mapped. This way, it doesn't get the second slot, only gets the first one basically. And it could, sometimes it's, it doesn't work with like new keys and stuff. So we don't want that. And the reason we don't display with this also uh, for the previous step, like uh, here, it's because um, if we, we use this, it's gonna display the new keys on, at the top of the array. So at index zero basically. So it's gonna reorder the stuff in the menu and the UI. And we don't want that. So we're only going to use this to get the values and the display stuff. Then you get the array. And then from this, we get, uh, it's going to check every key. And then for the key that it gets to, uh, if it's equal to the new key that we're going to pass along, um, well, you, you basically um, replace it. So if it's equal to the new key, well, the key that was equal to the new key, you're going to get the mapping and the slots for it and make it to none and change uh, to its uh, input selector, of course. And then the key that we're on right now, well, we're gonna do the normal remap. So pass it the name, the slot, the new key, and the local key selector. And now the something tricky is if, if we do this like that, it will work, but uh, not display correctly. Now I'll show you. So basically if we do this and we go here, what you do is you bring up this function right here. You plug it in right here like this, like this. And then you pass um, the new key. You pass also the input key selector you need. So this one right here. And then uh, if the key is never used, branch is going to look like this. Now, if I try this right here, it will not display that it worked, but it did work. So if I do this and this, now I can go backward like this. And if I go back here, it did remap here. So if I do this, go back and go back in, it reconstructed and it worked. So what's the problem here is a refresh. So we need to refresh. And what we did to refresh is all the way back here, we made this custom event here. So, what we're going to do is go back and say here into a function and we're going to make a new variable, but not a local one, a public variable. So we call it this and it's already mapped for me here because I copy pasted it earlier. Just going to check your, um, you go get your widget, which mine is input list, which is the, the list we made the first thing from. And you can, can you can call this uh, input list, whatever you want to call it. So just input list. There we go there and you can call it refresh and this will still not work because it's not um, like it's passed as uh, you can get like the values from this, but it's not a uh, direct reference to it. So what we need is go uh, back to the variable, expose it on spawn, go in single categories, go to the widget where we created, refresh, promote this to a variable, make it expose on spawn again go back here again, here refresh again, then you get here and then you just get a reference to self, plug it in here and there you go, you're done. And now it's the direct reference to it. Now, if you do this and this, I'm just gonna reset to default and I press, I do this, it refreshes at the same time. And you can do this for uh, not these ones yet, but you can do it for anything in here. And, um, I'm, we're gonna do this one now, but uh, another problem again we're gonna have that I'm gonna fix after this is you can not, um, you can do this. You can refresh a row to default and it, it will not uh, do the relapse. So we'll fix this in a moment. I'm just gonna do the second mapping right now first. Now what you wanna do for the second mapping is basically just copy paste everything you did. So I'm just gonna make my new uh, events right here from my second key selector, place it here. And now just 
copy paste the whole thing. And that's it. That's the whole thing right here. There. Place it here. Now, of course, you need to have the second key selector here. And second here. Place this second slot again. And there we go. You got it. So if I do this, this, now you can refresh this and it will work for this too. Now, something else uh, for this function right here is um, that we need to verify if not only the mappable keys are mapped, but if the non mappable keys that are mapped inside our mapping context are um, are there. So basically we don't want to remap uh, a key that uh, is by default in the game, but we don't want it mappable, but the player can map um, on top of it. We don't want that. So if we check all the mappings that are in the game that are mappable and the new key is not equal to any of them, it's going to do nothing basically. So it's going to uh, go to the, the next uh, the next loop. So let's say we map uh, the F button with the which is not mapped to anything. Well, it's going to pass through this just fine. And then it's going to go here. But let's say my F button is mapped to a flashlight button that I don't want to be mapped uh, by the player, but it's hidden in the game. Well, it's gonna, it's not gonna be able to map to, we, we don't want it to map. So we check all the mapping context after it, and we check if the key mappable is not mappable. So we get only the not mappable ones. Check if it's equal to it, and if it is, we get um, uh, the slot from it, which we need to make it the local slot that we get from player and then uh, we just check the key that is in there and we set the set key to the previous one basically why we do this right here it's just to um, make it so it looks like it never changed but um, we don't want it to like uh, because the key selector by default it kind of changes anyway if you select the key and it didn't work so this is more like a cosmetic thing if we don't do this it's gonna appear like it changes but it, it doesn't really so this is just for uh, the looks of it to make it look like it's not a bug or anything. So let's say we mapped it to F. This works fine. This doesn't. It's going to return that the key is used. And if the key is never used because we mapped Q and Q is never mapped, never into the mapping context, well, it's going to return that the key is never used and then it's going to be fine. So I'm just going to go through this one last time. So you set the local variable here. You get to the, the loops here. Just like that. Make sure that these are too false. Make sure to refresh here. We don't need to refresh uh, down here because we're not mapping anything here. And then if everything is great, just return it to true. And that's it. That's the whole function here. Okay. So now, what we're going to do is prevent um, when we return a row to default from being uh, mapped to the same key, basically. So what we're going to do is pretty similar. Just going to move this over here. This is my default button. And uh, we're going to make a new function, which is going to be called uh, replace mapping, I guess. Anything you want. And I'm just going to copy paste a function that I did earlier again. Boom. Which is basically, I'll show you the same thing we did um, in this function. Like the top, uh, the first uh, the first index here of the sequence. It's the same thing that we did because we don't need to check these ones here. We know for sure that the key is going to be mapped if, if we return it to default. And it needs to change, basically. If it doesn't need to change or whatever because it was never mapped, well, it's obviously never going to work anyway. So we don't need to do like a whole Boolean um, path through uh, pass through thing here. So I'm just going to make these into my inputs. This right here. Just going to rename these so it doesn't get confusing. Key and uh, selector. And slot. There we go. Here we pass the user settings, of course. User settings. So we get the user settings here. 
pass through here to the mappings get if the current key uh, is equal to the default key basically which which is going to be this one right here we can call this default key actually default key whoops key and then if it's equal to it well it's going to take the key that is equal to the the key that was supposed to be a default key let's get remap it uh to the default key so we need to um well, well, actually, this one is going to be replaced to none because this is the key that needs to be removed from it. So this one's going to be like this right here and target this right here. This, so this one is going to be removed. And then the key to map is going to be um, made into the new key. So the default key is going to be the new key. And then this right here, we can refresh it. And there we go. And then we don't need to... Um, we, uh, I mean, we need to refresh the whole thing. So we just call this here, refresh all, and that's it. And we don't make any return nodes. So this is a whole function. So I'm going to going through again. So we get these right here, slot type, key type, and sector type. Get the user settings, get the array that you can copy and paste from the other, the previous function we did, get the array. If the key is equal to the default key, through it's gonna replace the one that is supposed that is being removed to none and set the new one to the default key and refresh the whole thing then you can just go here into your reset button function replace mapping copy and paste this copy and paste this and bring this here too and so this is going to be for my second slot so uh, the slot here, the default key is the default key, and the mapping slot here. And I would do the same thing for the first slot. Oops, first, like this, like this, and like this. And that's it, that's the whole thing. So if I go back here, I might need to refresh my mappings. Yeah, I'm gonna refresh them. So if I do this and then I do this, boom, it removed it and it's fine. I could do this too. It will remove it. I could go like these and just go bang, 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 bang. And there we go. You have the whole thing. And there you go. You pretty much have your whole menu. So you can change your inputs, place them, clear the rows. Everything saves every time you do this. And uh, it creates your own save. You can refresh, uh, restart, reset, I mean, sorry, all the inputs. And that's it. So I hope it helped you guys, helped this course help you. And uh, yeah, have fun.